Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers knockoff review. In today's video we're taking a look at the latest offering from the team over at Black Mamba or AI Mech or Mechanical Alliance, whatever name they are floating around under at the moment. This is the BS-02 Alloy version Skybreaker. It's their take on a slightly undersized, slightly simplified version of the unique toys take on the last night Megatron. So it is a knockoff of a third party. Make it any less a knockoff? Eh, probably not. Quick look around the box. That's literally what we've got. Uh, could that even be the same artwork that they used for some of the Wei Zhang stuff? I'm, I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before. Uh, that's literally it. Let's crack him open. And here he is out of his plastic prison. Now, like I said, he's not exactly the same. He is similar, but he does have some slightly simplified areas as well as he's actually undersized. He's been downscaled to actually, in my opinion, look better with the likes of the Toy World Prime. I think that scale does actually look better. I'll show you all that once I've done a full comparison between him and the Unique Toys version. But uh, some of the things that they skimped out on really do bug me. But anyway, let's see him alongside the Unique Toys version. And here we have him on the turntable spinning around. You can clearly see the difference in height between these two, albeit it's not massive, but it's enough especially when you compare them to other figures in the line now i prefer the blacky gray that they've used on unique toys but at the same time i prefer all of these nice little accents that are highlighted on this black mamba version uh, the little bits of gold and red i think kind of make it pop slightly better still completely unsure as to why they removed some of the articulation though the head now doesn't actually look down any more than what it is here. Uh, it's just on a ball socket now, whereas the Unique Toys one is on a pivot and you can get a really nice downward motion, very kind of menacing. That's now missing. Uh, to be fair, to make this completely fair, I should have had Unique Toys sporting his sword on his back as well, so you could see them both equally, but both are beautiful figures. Uh, this is clearly ripped off from the Unique Toys version, but not sure why they went with those simplifications. Maybe it was cost, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, both figures do look beautiful, don't they? Uh, it's something that Unique Toys always manages to do. Quick scale comparison. Here they are alongside the Toy World Optimus. Uh, personally, I think that actually scales remarkably well. Toy World Prime's already bigger than Unique Toys Challenger. And I thought the scale difference was way too vast him and their Megatron and I think just scaling it down slightly really has made all of the difference. I still love how much these figures look kind of like a robotic predator. It's just that kind of predator helmet that Megatron's sporting. I absolutely adore that design. As you can quickly see here I've actually switched out the faceplate. Uh, this is the one that comes with it as standard. And you basically just pull this piece away. It's good that the head is ball mounted because you can literally just pop that straight off. And this just comes unclipped from the front and we can place that back on. But obviously we have these kind of horns that can come out to the side and then we can pop that light on on those eyes as well. And that's a really kind of almost like a a ram look to him. That's nice, isn't it? But it's just the details that are different. And you've got all of this extra detailing on Megatron, or on the shoulder here, on here, in the chest. That's something that wasn't present with Unique Toys version. All of that little extra detail, it does kind of make the difference. On that chest there as well. Look at that. It's 
It's just a shame about that lack of articulation on that head. So it's not just a straight up KO, is it? They've gone to town with kind of adding the levels of detailing on the shoulders, the chest. There isn't really a plain panel on this guy in comparison. If this is your first time uh, looking at this mold, whether it be this smaller version, or of course the original, uh, the accessory wise, we get uh, a cannon. Uh, the cannon itself, again, has an LED function. By pressing this tab here, that's blinding. Isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we get this lovely cannon. We get the chain that goes up and tabs in to the back of that arm. We get his very kind of gladiatorial shield with space on here, mind, to be able to put his cannon. And then we get his sword. And uh, unlike the Unique Toys version, this one doesn't have any paint running along the outside. It's just what you see is what you get. Uh, to be honest with you, I prefer the painted version really kind of unsure why they would put accents of that gold on the gun and the shield if they're not gonna put it on the sword. There's just something about him, isn't there? Something menacing. I don't know whether it is that added detailing or the little extra paint applications or something, but just with him, the kind of that natural walking pose, he looks almost demonic. Now for the purpose of the transformation, we're gonna remove the weapons. Now I wanna warn you all off the bat, uh, the shield is a nightmare. Uh, if you take all the weapons off for the transformation, and this is actually tabbed into it. Look at the mess I've made of that. Basically, this tabs in on a ball. It's meant to be inside this shield, which is fair enough, but when you tab it into the arm, this is so tight that it just pops off here, and I couldn't get it out. I used them. Um, pliers and grips i applied heat i had to take the whole arm apart and you can't access from behind and it eventually just brute force and ignorance that managed to get it out now so you can't just leave it in there but just be so careful when you apply that in on as the shield it's just something that you all need to kind of bear in mind it's frustrating because it's uh, made a uh, Fairly substantial video, even longer for me, the filming process anyway. It took a long time for me to get that out and uh, almost, almost chucked <laughs> the figure out of the window in frustration. But uh, before I actually get him transformed up, uh, let's just take a look at the articulation, shall we? As previously mounted the head. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, these shoulder pads are on hinges. So you can kind of bring those right the way up and bring those out. Arms are on friction joints going around. Really would have liked a ratchet in there, but got a ratchet going up. Uh, there is an upper kind of elbow rotation as opposed to an upper bicep. And when you get a double jointed bend on that arm, we get a pivot on the wrist and fully articulated hands. The waist does rotate. I don't think, I mean, I've transformed him twice. And I, I don't think there's an ab crunch in there, uh, we have these hip skirts to the front and to the sides that can be moved. They're all hinged. We have legs that can come forwards and back, out to side, thigh rotation in there. Bend on the knee comes up, very kind of unnatural looking bend. And then we also got that secondary bend on here, which locks in. That's all part and parcel of the transformation. There's something I didn't really like about the Unique Toys version was that knee bend. But they've kind of kept that in. And then down to the feet, we've got some pivoting going on in there. And we do have a little bit of up and down. Love the kind of gold in there. And there's some die cast in amongst here somewhere. I can feel it. But uh, yeah, it's just a good, but not quite ticking those articulation boxes for me. 
Unique Toys does seem to do it kind of more fluidly. But anyway, uh, let's go and lift these up like so. And the arms are gonna come up to the side as well. This panel here is gonna lift. And this one here is going to lift as well. Push this piece back. So this whole head panel, this all comes backwards, revealing this chest. Bring this back panel down. If you look, there's this tab just behind his torso. We're gonna wiggle that. And that actually allows this entire head and arm piece to drop away. These arm panels are gonna come out and that allows this piece here to come down as well. So this is all kind of freed up. And then this is gonna flip up and over to the top. So we can start to kind of building this up ready for that jet mode. This untabs and this untabs. This then flips up like so, so that when this comes up to this position, this can then come in. And that's gonna form part of that cockpit section. And then we can bring that back down. Open up the nose cone, bring that out, bring that around, and close that back off. I'm hoping you can see that there, there's this sliding bar. And uh, basically the shoulders are naturally down in these grooves here. So you need to slide it up on this bar and then bring these in and you'll know that it's up high enough because there is a tab just on here which tabs in to the neck piece of that cockpit. That now shows you that those are up nice and high. Move these shoulder panels forward and this is going to open up like so and then open up like this. This is then going to rotate on this hinge and this will come up and this is gonna end up tabbing into the top up here. Unplug that butt plug piece. It now allows these to drop down nice and low, which in turn then allows these to come in. We're gonna push and the same on this side, we're gonna push that in and then these hinges here are gonna push and locate nicely. Tabbing in to the body and to the top of the ship. Bring these arms and legs into the center. These are gonna come all the way up, allowing for this piece to come forward. And this whole head panel here can now drop. Interesting to see just how everything kind of folds up on these. Really clever pieces. Bring this panel down. Make sure the arms rotate around so these little laser cannons are at the front here. This is going to come up and that's going to compress and sit. And like I say, you want to open up these hands. All right, let's try and get all of this foot transformation on camera, shall we? These come up and this comes up, and these are going to rotate around so that they join in the middle, like so, and like so, and then they just tab in, like that, and we can then split the back of these legs away. This whole piece here is actually going to unfold this comes up like so, this then folds out onto this panel like this. And everything's gonna kind of separate. You've got several different pieces doing different things at once. So this comes away, 
see this piece here moves independently. And then this piece here also moves independently. And the idea is to untab the knee joint, bring that down, and that's gonna come over here like this. These are going to separate and we've got this kind of cannon section in here. Again though, this rotates. So we bring so uh, just bring this around, bring this cannon piece out, and bring this piece down. So it's underneath the leg. arm panel, flip all the way around so this faces out to the back. This piece here will also come out and that's going to extend, it's going to kind of tuck the arm sections away underneath there. And then this panel here, this comes up, this panel comes down like this. This is going to slide into this void. This rotates around on this hinge so it comes up to the top. And then come around to this side panel. We just need to line these up and this is going to slide inside here. There are several tabs marked along here where it should, he says. Just tab in, easier said than done when you're trying to get it all done. And all shown on camera. There we go. I think that's that's in at all all points there, I think. Right there, then we need to bring this arm down. That then comes down to this location, like so, and bends on the elbow. And you wanna just uh, compress these fists up now. So nice and small. Because this is gonna come under, and if we look, there's this tab here. Where this arm tabs in, so push and secure that into place. He says, There we go. This turns around, and if you look, this is going to come in, and this will come up and over, and that will. Just latch, he says. There we go on to the underside of the shoulders. Those arms back over, throw these laser thrusters out to the back. It's just a matter of making sure everything is tabbed in as it should be. And there we have it fully transformed up. I'll just stuck the cannon on top there there we go. Uh, still not the most enjoyable of the Unique Toys transformations, uh, but you know, it does what it needs to. I'm never actually going to have Megatron displayed like this, but it's nice to know that it's an option. I mean, he's a pretty big boy still. As a comparison, here he is alongside 
the Studio Series Starscream. So a uh, huge difference there. Uh, it, it's okay, it's a good figure for the price, uh, but I still don't enjoy the transformations. A lot of fiddly pieces, and it's a really kind of hard, rough plastic that does hurt your fingers when transforming. It's the third time I've done it, and it's not getting any easier on my fingers. Maybe I'm just getting old, I don't know. <laughs> I am old, there's no, there's no doubt there. But all in all, it's a good piece. If you want a Megatron for your collection and the whole head not looking down thing doesn't bother you, then this is bang on, money for your buck. It's fantastic value. I'd like to thank TF Direct for making this review possible and getting this shipped out to me as quickly as they did. I would include a link in the description below where this can be ordered if you choose to make this your Megatron. If you have the unique toys version, is this worth getting? Probably not, I'd say, uh, just because it's so similar. But if I was to pick one or the other, I probably would go for this one, albeit I'd love to kind of make some sort of modification for that neck joint. Until next time for myself and the rest of the Collectibles household. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>